Hi everyone, I'm Ranger Scott. And I'm Ranger Alyssa. And welcome to our new video series for Shenandoah National Park's Fall 2020. Don't want to cause any confusion, the photo that you just saw in the intro was from 2018. As you can see here in the park, the leaves haven't really started changing just yet, but we're going to be bringing you a new video every Thursday at 2 p.m. right here on our Facebook or YouTube channel so you can watch the leaves change. That's right, and we are going to be here every week at Pass Mountain Overlook, which is mile 30.1 on Skyline Drive. And we're going to do a peak check. And the way that we do that is we're going to check Neighbor Mountain, which is right behind us. And you can see it's still kind of that flat green. We haven't really seen any pop of color yet, no orange or red or yellow. However, we do have some goldenrod right behind us. And that's one of the signature flowers that you're going to see in the park during the fall. So another way to keep you updated with the peak check is that we are going to take pictures and we have strategically placed some of our photographers throughout the park to take pictures and we are going to upload those every week along with this video on all of our social media and our website. And if you guys have pictures you'd wanna share, please drop those in the comments below and make sure you include a location and date. You know, Ranger Alyssa, one thing I'm really looking forward to is all these bugs going away as we go through. Oh my these gosh, videos. I know. <laughs> well, one thing we're going to be bringing you is a special topic every week. A ranger from Shenandoah is going to be breaking down a cool aspect of fall. Right, and after our guest ranger gives their video on their special topic, we are going to dive right into some travel tips that are really important for you guys to know before you arrive in the park. And if you have any questions during this video, please drop those in the comments below and we will have someone monitor those and answer them as quickly as possible. Cool. So shall we go to the special topic? Yeah, let's check it out. Awesome. So this week it was actually brought to you by myself. I was here at uh, Pass Mountain at sunset, kind of thinking about what's going on with the earth that's bringing fall to us. Ah, fall has arrived. What does that mean to you? pumpkin spice, warm jackets, making s'mores on campfires. Fall means different things to different people. Meteorologists say that fall starts September 1st. They count every season as a clean three months. Our friends in the Southern Hemisphere started their fall in March and are just now entering a nice warm springtime. Astronomers and most people in the North count the start of fall as the autumnal equinox. What does that mean? The word autumn derives from the Latin word autumnus and from the Etruscan word auto, which had connotations of the passing of the year. Before the 16th century, we would have called this end of the year season harvest. But after the 1500s, as more people moved into cities and stopped working the land, the word harvest became less associated with this time of the year and the word autumn regained its popularity. Fall traces its origins to Germanic languages, like Old Norse and Old English. It came from expressions like fall of the leaf and fall of the year, compared to spring of the leaf and spring of the year. Equinox, as you may know, comes from Latin for equal night, when the Earth's tilt is directly perpendicular to the sun's imaginary equator. This year, the equinox was this Tuesday, September 22nd at 9.30 in the morning. So the term equal night might make you expect to have 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of nighttime, but it gets a little more complicated. If you felt bummed when I told you the equinox had already passed, at least you can still look forward to the equilux. The equilux is the actual date when we have even amounts of day and night, and the closest that we get to that is tomorrow. September 25th. But why is that? Well, there's two factors we have to account for. The first is atmospheric refraction. You know how when you stick a straw into water, it looks like it bends forward a little? Well, the same thing happens to light when it enters our atmosphere. Light enters the upper atmosphere and it gets slightly curved around the Earth, giving us a few extra minutes of daylight at sunrise and sunset. Another reason is that the sun is a large disk in the sky, and we count sunrise as the moment we can first see just the tip top of the sun, and we count sunset as when the last sliver of sun goes beneath the horizon. 
Those subtle changes give us slightly longer days, which is why our equal lux is three days later when here in Luray our Friday sunrise is at 7.04 a.m. and our sunset is at 7.05 p.m. Of course, I forgot to mention that it also depends on your longitude, latitude, altitude, what obstacles are on your horizon, your humidity levels, your barometric pressure, Never mind. For me, I like to think of the start of fall as when I can finally dust off my favorite hoodies. <sighs> That's nice. All right, so now we are going to dive right into our travel tips. And this is anything you should know before you arrive in the park. And so a good place to start is our website. It, right on the landing page, we have a big picture and the title is Know Before You Go. So go ahead and click on that and it will list some of the travel tips that we are going to actually uh, discuss just after this and some regulations that are really important to know before you arrive. Um, one other thing you can do is download our park app and make sure you download the offline content because there's really not much of a cell service up once you get up here. And that's also important to have that information right in your back pocket and ready to go when you need it. One other thing you can do is print maps. This will minimize the content or the... Interactions between rangers, right? Thank you, gotcha. yes. The interactions between rangers and the visitors. And it will also help you plan your trip so you'll know what hikes you want to do when you get here. And then one last thing we really want to stress is bringing a trash bag so that you can pack out any trash that you have with you, whether you're hiking or in a campground or if you're at a picnic area. So make sure that you bring those and then pack out all of your trash and throw it away in the um, trash receptacle. Definitely. 2020 is bringing a lot of changes to the way we're doing things at the park, interactions with rangers. But another one is our technology. You can get your yeah. passes online now and that makes things super easy. All you got to do, pay for your pass online. You can print it out or just bring it on your phone. If you want to get an annual pass, you can do that too. Pay for it online, show your confirmation at the entrance station, and then they can give you the pass there. All you got to do is check out recreation.gov for all that information. And actually, speaking of information, I have some insider information for people. A good day to come to the park is actually this Saturday because it is National, National Public, Public Lands, Lands day. day. What does that mean? it means that it's going to be a fee-free day. So the lines are going to be moving quickly. So if you want to come get your pass that day, I think it's a good day to do it. Um, some little travel tips for you if you want to get through smoothly and kind of avoid crowds mm -hmm. is come into our southern entrance stations. Those are going to be less crowded than the ones in the north. So areas like Swift Run Gap, Rockfish Gap, those are some good places to enter into the park for the day. Absolutely. And one other place that's going to be typically booked and pretty crowded on weekends are our campgrounds. So fall is a really, really uh, popular time of year and most of our campgrounds and campsites have been reserved. But if you come early enough, maybe Thursday, maybe early Friday, you can do a first come, first serve site. Now what does that mean? That means for a first come, first serve site, you have to be in person to reserve that site. And it's also important to know campground regulations and that is again found on our website on the Know Before You Go section. Yeah, Shenandoah National Park is really crowded, especially during the fall. So you always want to make sure you have a plan A and a plan B, especially if you're going out on trails. Those things often get full by 9 a.m. The parking lots at the trailheads just won't have any parking. So areas like Old Rag, White Oak, or uh, Dark Hollow Falls, those trails are often on the weekends full by 9 a.m. So you want to make sure you get early. Then when you're on those trails, make sure that you stay on the trail. You know, we've got a lot of delicate ecosystems that you can damage, but also you want to make sure that you stay safe. Never climb um, on wet rocks by waterfalls and just staying on the trail, make sure you stay safe. And one other thing we want to mention is that we're going to be keeping you updated on the campground status as well as the parking statuses at most of our popular trailheads. And those are going to be found on all of our social media sites. So Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. Make sure you check those before you head out. And then one other thing that we also like to mention is that Shenandoah is one of few parks that actually allow pets on some of the permitted trails that we have here in our park. We want to make sure that when you come in the park and you pack in and pack out for yourself, you're also doing that for your pet. So any kind of waste that is left behind, make sure that you are prepared to take it out with you. And do not forget a leash, that is so important here. Definitely. So another aspect of the park, if you're coming in to have a picnic, that's a fantastic idea. 
but make sure that you never leave your food unattended. There's animals and wildlife all around the park and they're always on the lookout to get food whenever they can and eating human food is definitely not a thing that we want them to do. If you have a fire while you're picnicking, make sure you bring a bucket so you can completely extinguish the fire uh, when you're done with it. And make sure again that those fires are always in a fire grate so you can't bring a charcoal grill. And then one last thing we want to remind you of is COVID. Make sure that when you're here, you're following proper safety protocol. So that social distancing, which Scott and I have done, we were keeping our six feet. And if you can't maintain that six feet, remember to bring a mask. So once again, guys, if you have any questions, please drop those in the comments and we are going to answer those as quickly as we can. And Scott, any final message you want to leave? Well, I just want to invite people to come back next Thursday. Ranger Caitlin is actually going to be with us talking about what exactly is making the leaves change colors. That's always awesome. a good question. Right. So thanks. And I hope to see you again. See you then. Bye. Bye.